Okay, hello and welcome everyone uh, to Focus and Interact, uh, the International Women's Day edition. So we're going to have a series of these conversations within the month of March and I'm excited to be hosting today's session. So I want to wish all the women across the world, you know, a happy International Women's Day. So today is not just uh, one of those global days or celebrations where you know, it's, 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 you know, something that is all over the place, but it's one of those celebrations and milestones where we recognize and celebrate the efforts of women across the world. Um, and then also to engage in conversations like these, which, you know, would push the thinking forward, bringing new strategies, partnerships, opportunities on a global scale, you know, so together we are all celebrating International Women's Day. Uh, this is Focus and Interact uh, by Abbey Innovation Studios. Um, it is an organization promoting sustainable development, leveraging technology. So my name is Joy Bonsushmutz, co-founder and CEO, and I'm excited to be hosting a very amazing uh, guest today, which we'll be meeting shortly. So um, she is in the person of Ohima J. Ando. If you have been, you know, tuning into the airwaves, um, following her, you'd be seeing that she's done a lot of interviews, you know, in the last few years, um, talking about girls in science and technology, women in technology. And today I'm excited to be having her as our guest. She's the founder of GIST, which is Girls in Science and Technology, and also the proprietress of PM STEAM, Science, Technology and Engineering, Arts and Math Academy. I recently watched an interview of her on Anita Erskine's uh, Shiro's show. She's also been on CTTV, Africa 54. And the better part of it, she's also an author of a children's book, uh, Steam All Around Us. And I'm sure she'll be telling us a bit about that as we go along. She's also a certified transformation coach uh, with the Coach Masters Academy. So I'm really happy to welcome my guest for today, uh, Ohima Eje Ando. Good morning, Ohima. Welcome to Focus and Interact. We're happy to have you. Good morning, Joy. Thank you so much for having me here today. And happy International Women's Day to you. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few minutes to share together. We have people joining us from across the world, watching on our various social media channels, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. We want to welcome you all also to this um, discussion. So Ohima, um, as we get into the conversation, I, I, like I said, I watched one interview that you did talking about, you know, starting your journey in engineering. And today you, you, are, you founded a, an organization which is championing girls in science and technology. And then you're also doing a STEAM Academy I mean, I feel like, wow, that's a lot of things going on. And my question really is, what got you here? I mean, how has your journey been and what got you into this space of being so passionate about uh, this subject of girls in science and technology? Okay, so basically I would say I've been passionate about everything involving women, right? But then finding myself in the STEM space and realizing that there were very few women there, I decided to channel my passion for empowering women into the STEM field. So that is why I started Girls in Science and Technology. So let me take it from the top. Honestly, growing up, I, I've never had any issue fitting in as a girl or fitting in as a woman, right? Because I, I was raised by my mom, a single mom, and I, ha I have an older sister. So I was in a, a house with just women, basically. So there was nothing like, this is for the guys to do, and that is for the girls to do. We did everything together. So I never saw that as an issue growing up. In school, I was very vocal. Um, I went to Ashmota School from junior high to senior high. I was a very vocal person. I was never, I'm not one to shy away from things, right? So that was also yeah. not, I didn't have that feel of 
boy, girl, boys are doing this, girls are doing that. And I actually even ended up in engineering by chance. I didn't know what I wanted to do in the university. But I remember when it was time to select my courses. Let me start from BC, actually. So I wanted to do visual arts. I love drawing. I love to draw. So I wanted to get into visual arts. And at the time, my science teacher said um, he thought it wouldn't be too challenging for me and I would get playful at it, right? That's what he thought, that it would be, like, not to say visual arts is an easy course or anything like that, but then he knew me, he knew how I could take some things for granted and all that, so he thought I needed something more challenging. So he advised that my mom should make me go into science. So that is why I ended up doing science. So it's not like I didn't grow up thinking I want to be a doctor or I didn't grow up thinking that way. I really did not know what I wanted to do. So I went into senior high school. I studied science. As a senior high school, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So my mom went to Kenya University with me. We spoke to some lecturers, some professors. And at the time, um, Ghana, had discovered oil so the whole oil business was was a big deal in, in ghana at the time and then one lecturer advised that i studied geological engineering you know with geology they also have anything in the in the earth right so if yeah. i don't end up even in the oil sector i can go into the mining sector so i went to tech i studied geological engineering and that was when I realized, oh, so okay, like it's a thing. Like girls don't really go into the <laughs> girls don't really go into the engineering field. Cause at the time I think we're 110 or 109 when we started. And there yeah. were just nine ladies in the class. Nine or ten ladies in the class. So that was when I realized, okay, like it was it was something like people were talking about it and it was actually real, it was happening. And so in school, I was OK. I fit in well. Like, I'm not, you, can't, you really can't bully me. Like, I'm very outspoken. So I never experienced anything of that sort in school. And then I went on to join Shlombeji. Fortunately for me, I got the opportunity to join Shlombeji when I was in school. Um, I did an internship with them. And then after school, they called me to join them for national service. And as a national service, they took me on. So I, I was with them for about six, seven years before I left. So it was when I was on the field that I realized, wow, because there were times where you, you find 200 people offshore and I'll be the only lady. So now I started realizing like there, there's a problem. But what is the problem? It, I don't think it was, it wasn't that women were not interested. It was lack of the knowledge of these fields, right? People did, didn't know these fields were there for them or even available to them. Because most of the time, um, when we see an engineer sharing their story, then you would see the men, right? And when you read articles, you watch TV, you normally see men. That was, was when I realized representation really matters. Because growing up there, I saw women like Gypsy Auntie that I was looking at. I'm like, wow, she's so pretty. She's intelligent. I love the way she talks. Like, I was looking up to women like that, right? So I believed that, okay, so we have to, you know, throw more light on our women in STEM. Because there are women in STEM, not as much as the men, unfortunately. But then there are some, there are a few out there doing amazing things. And that was it for me. I'm like, okay, let me just start Girls in Science and Technology. So when I started Girls in Science and Technology, I was still on the field. Um, that, that was what I was doing, doing light on our women in STEM. And then people were like, wow, so this, I can do this, I can do that. And I would find people ask me questions. How did you get this opportunity? What did you study? So then there was the need to also throw light on these courses out there and engage yeah. our ladies in the universities and all that. And then when I started the academy, I always wanted to start a school. That is one thing I knew in the invest. I love, I love dealing with kids. I love anything that involves kids. So I knew I would eventually start a school. 
But then I realized that um, even on the field, right, there were some educated men that would pass, excuse me to use this word, but like some silly comments to you. You think someone who is so educated shouldn't be talking like this, right? Somebody yeah. can look at you and say, hey, I will never let my daughter do something like this. Why would I let my wife um, leave, leave their family and come here? And these are educated men, people with masters and all that, right? So I said, okay, I, I want to start a school, but I'm not going to start um, our, our, our traditional school. I'm going to focus on an academy that introduced, because I love STEM. I want to encourage the young ones to get into STEM. Yeah. But I'm going to start a school, a, a STEM academy, or at the time I didn't even know much about STEM. So I went in looking at starting a STEM academy where the, the reason why I started that was I wanted the boys and the girls to work together by doing hands-on things together, communicating together, collaborating together. These are things we don't usually find in our traditional education system, right? You come, you do your work, each one for himself, you pass, you go. But then the whole idea was, no, now we have to do better. We have to, we focus so much on the women, but one thing we have to know is our girls are going to end up working with the men. So how are we preparing our guys to also embrace the women when they come, right? So that was the whole idea behind PM Steam Educational Center to it, equip it, our yeah. young ones. Yes, I'm listening. To it. Yeah, I mean, I was going to just um, just pardon me that didn't make you learn, but what what I thought about was what was the response? What what has been the response and the behavior with girls getting to um, see you in? You know, they know about working in engineering and also understanding these new careers that they could also venture into the space of uh, technology. What has been the behavior? So it's been great, surprisingly. Honestly speaking, I didn't do, to date, I, I don't see that I'm doing so much. But from the feedback I get from people, it, it amazes me, right? It amazes me. Me so much. I see myself being featuring, featured in more. How people are embracing the idea, the concept. It's been amazing, and it's actually been even empowering to me myself to keep going. Right? Yes, because I see. Okay, people are now looking at me. Um, I'm making an impact. I'm empowering people, and even with the young ones that I do with those are. I've dealt with for a very long time. I see the difference. I see the confidence that they have now. I see how kids express themselves now. And it's yeah. beautiful to watch. Awesome. Yes. Um, so, you know, today as we mark International Women's Day, you know, on everywhere we're seeing, you know, the hashtag embrace equity. And the, the global theme is digital, you know, trying to um, shed some light on, you know, digital inclusion and the space where women, you know, are in these spaces of technology, science, education, engineering, arts, math, you know, some of these things. And for me, one of the things I, I am finding as a gap is that probably we don't understand the why. You know, why is it important for women to be in this space? Because if we have 200 men in the, you know, in a class and they're all engineers, they would equally solve, you know, the, the nation's problems. So why is it important? Because the, then, you know, before you answer that, the, the reason why I keep coming back to the why is that um, the individual, the women themselves, it also kind of plays a role. Because if you understand why I need to be in this space, for parents, like, I mean, I watched one of your interviews where you talked about parents even you know, being a challenge because they didn't understand why their girl child should be engaging in uh, science, robotics, experiments, and these kind of things. So for you, what would you say fundamentally is the, is the importance of women engaging in this space of technology? Okay, so um, I like talking about this. I call it the STEAM mindset, right? And when I say STEAM mindset, I mean 
learning to address things, address problems in a steam way. You know, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Yeah. Most of the time, what women women do is we identify problems and we try to solve these problems, right? But then imagine the good that we can all do if you have a technological idea of how to tackle problems. Hmm. We are tackling problems. One, it makes things easier. Technology makes things easier for us, right? It makes things faster. And what that means is that you solve a lot of problems within a short time. And that is what women do. So imagine empowering our ladies with this skill. All the good that can be done. Yeah. We do it, it becomes easier, it becomes faster, meaning where well, you get a lot of things done. That is why we have to empower our girls. I, I, I like the, you know, the way you put it, the STEAM mindset. And, you know, they, they have this thing they say that, the, you know, the science of something or the art of something, you know, so it's more like being able to grasp how, you know, things evolve or problems evolve, understanding what is, what is in the back end, you know, if you're, if you're um, a software developer and, you know, you develop a product for a client, they would only see the front end, they would only see the beautiful UI UX solution. Um, exactly. But you, as the coder, understand what is causing, you know, the the apps and then the you know the features to behave the way they behave. So I think from what I'm hearing from you is that when understanding the science, understanding the technology behind what we are doing, gives us a better chance of solving some problems even faster. Because women are solving problems anyway, yeah. so why not empower them? Uh, to do that. I think that there's one, one aspect that um, when you talk about awareness, I also have a, an engineering background in the telecom space. And the way I got to, I mean, I got to hear about engineering for the first time when a group of women in engineering who were students in the tertiary, uh, KNUST, came to my high school. Um, I knew I wanted to be in the sciences. I mean, I was in the sciences, but I didn't want to be a medical doctor. And you know, if you're in Ghana, if you're studying science, it's either a doctor or um, something else. Yeah. You know, so they came and then they were talking about civil engineering. And I looked at this beautiful lady who is in civil engineering. And I go like, I want to be a civil engineer. And, you know, talk about telecoms engineering. And... All those efforts to continue to raise awareness, like you said, representation, was so key for me even finding my career into technology, you know. And now we're talking about solving problems. Now you, you come into the space where mindset shift, um, you know, plays a role in the game. You know, mm -hmm. one of the, there's a beautiful picture that is being circulated as, you know, they're promoting International uh, Women's Day. And it's the difference between equality and equity. You know, uh, there's been so much talk about gender equality. There's been so much talk about, you know, giving women equal opportunities and equal rights and all of those kind of things. But we're seeing a different trend here. Um, you know, this picture that I'm, I'm sharing on the screen right now gives us some idea mm -hmm. on what equity brings to the table. And today, the topic that we are exploring, you know, is focusing on the, 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 the word called equity. In the first, mm -hmm. you know, in the picture, you'd see, um, you know, everybody being given the same bicycle. That's equality. Yeah, we're giving everybody the same opportunity. But equity mm -hmm. kind of tailors it towards the needs uh, of the people. Um, so him, I just want you to comment on, on this one uh, quickly and your thoughts around equity, equality, and the opportunities that they offer. So I love, I love equity so much. When I saw this year's thing, I was really excited about it. Equality, I always say equality is, is quite broad. When we say gender equality, human rights bit, yes. I understand that we are all human beings and we are supposed to be treated as such, right? Both men and women. But um, being a man and being a woman comes with two different things. Equality is like saying a man, a man should be able to 
get pregnant for the nine, ten months and also give birth. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That is yeah. Uh, so when we talk about equality, it's so broad. But when you talk about equity, then you can see that okay, we are being specific. Because mm. if you're attacking, let's say, like an example, my former workplace, and um, when it comes to the 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 weight limit that a woman can can lift and what a man it was different mm. because most of the time sometimes there are exceptions but yeah. we don't when, when you're talking about um, um human related things we don't deal with the exceptions right yeah. we do what yeah. with what is common so most of the time you would see that i think with the men their limits was 30 kg or so and with the women i think it was 15 kg that is equity Mm. right because yeah. they know that most of the time men are physically stronger than women yeah that is what we are talking about when we talk about equity mm. and your picture the picture you shared speaks volumes mm. and let me say that sometimes when people hear equity they think you can just fold your arms and be laid back and then you would still be provided with the platform to be equal to a man or get to the mm -hmm. level. No, you have to put in the work. Yeah. That is the perception that goes around now. People just assume, oh, I'm a woman, so this has to be done for me. We are fighting for equal rights. It doesn't work like that. That's right. That's we, right. Yes, that is what should separate you from other people. The opportunities mm -hmm. are a few now. Even with the men, it's not, not every man gets the same opportunity, right? They have to yeah. move and work for it. It applies to us too. We have to be fair when we are demanding for what should be given to us. You don't mm. fold your arms and then expect that all these things will be handed over to you. You work for it. Mm. Equity is knowing that I have the same qualification as this man and I was considered for the job because of one, two, three things. Not because I'm a woman and they are thinking that um, I will take maternity leave and all these. Yeah, there are so many factors. I'm yeah. telling you, there's so many factors that comes into play when yeah. we talk about women working. Mm. When we talk about women basically doing everything that we have to do. That is how yeah. equity comes into play. You have a workplace that tells you, oh, okay, so when a woman is pregnant, maybe they cannot be exposed to this. So we are going to move her into this world. You mm. have a workplace is that is equity right yeah. you have a workplace yeah. that will tell you that when a woman gives birth we are going to be paying her for about the maternity leave right we're yeah. going to be paying them for the three months till they return to work in case there's a complication we are going to address it this way that is yeah. what equity. not when a woman is pregnant and you have to hide it because mm. I've, I've seen people offshore five months pregnant hiding this because they are scared they will lose their jobs mm. right yeah. but yeah. one thing also is when we talk about equity embracing equity you have to talk about empowering our women to speak out mm. and that is one problem i have realized um during my time offshore during my time with students women just most women are scared to speak out and trust me when you speak out there are people out there willing to listen people out yeah. there willing to give you the opportunity yeah. don't give people the chance to say that i did not know unfortunately mm. there's something yes people people get away with things because they'll say you, you never spoke to them about it yeah until uh -oh. until something laid out for mm -hmm. us we are now what paving the path and how do we do this by speaking out you know you know um what you just said is is really interesting um i was going to ask you about what do you think you know the mindset shifts for organizations should be you know um as a lot of information is abounding now we've seen the impact of when women are given the chance and the opportunity to be who they are and still, um, you know, be who they are, um, accept the kind of uh, situations that their livelihood brings. Uh, you mentioned something that, you know, there were men who had master's degrees and you, you said educated, 
but still could make a, what's all we call unconscious bias statements or whether it's consciously biased statements against women to say, I mean, I don't think I would be allowing my, my child, my daughter to be coming on the field to do these kind of hard things. Um, but we have seen the impact. You look at the likes of, you know, the, the, the leader of the International Trade Organization, ITO, who has risen through the ranks and, you know, is causing a lot of changes and positive changes in the world. You know, when, when the opportunity is given, you know, women are ready to take it. You know, so I think that education, you know, literacy, going to school and being educated does not equate awareness about mm. some of the impact of, you know, no. gender equality, equity um, in our world today. So we all should be aware of our biases, even as individuals, you know, we're coming from culturally, uh, we have cultural biases, we have systemic biases that all influence, you know, the way people envision a woman's role, even in the workplace. So that is that is a very crucial point that you make. I mean, from your work, I, I wish like you could just share with us in, you know, in a minute or two, what are some of the hurdles and challenges that you have had to, you know, overcome or let's say even be innovative around because you just cannot, uh, you know, wish them away. I mean, that have shaped the way you have um, evolved as a, a woman in technology. And I think, uh, I mean, I was particularly looking forward to this conversation because I think that, the, I mean, our mentors, like you talked about looking up to the likes of Gifty Auntie, I've also had some great shoulders to stand on in the past. And I think that the younger generation of women that are coming up, women leaders, must also you know amplify their voices and also speak about some of these matters because we owe it to our generation and then those who come who have eventually fallen victim to um, biases and so do not even think so much of themselves to continue to have these um, conversations yeah so i mean how has your challenges and the challenges you've seen in your space of you know working with girls in your space of being a woman in engineering um, shape you um, to today? Okay, so um, as much as it's, it's heartbreaking to see some men not support the women, we should also understand that these are not things that they are used to. Right? Yeah. Most of them were not raised. Yes, most of them were not raised that way. Most of them were not raised to, to work with women, basically. Because when they speak, it's out of ignorance. Yeah. So, and I should speak, it doesn't even upset me. As I say, I, I am very vocal. So I'll mm. use the opportunity to educate you. And I, I see somebody has written in the comments section, and somebody's asking, what are the ways we can speak out without being labeled as proud, aggressive, or desperate? Mm. How, how, how do the, the men speak that they are not labeled as aggressive or they are not labeled as desperate. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a mindset thing with the women. You know where you are coming from. It's not about how the other person receives it. If you are coming from a good place, you know you are coming from a good place, right? You don't yeah. have any control over how somebody is going to take how, what I say. Mm. But I have control over how I speak out, right? Mm -hmm. So you know you're not being aggressive. You know you're not being disrespected. Then please, by all means, that is how you speak out. Mm -hmm. I can be having a normal conversation with you, Joy. Yeah. And I'll be okay, I'll be calm. But based on how you are coming into the conversation, you yeah. would come in, you, you, you know how you're coming in, like, Okay, I'm coming to have a conversation with Ohema. I'm willing to listen to her perspective, right? Yeah. You're coming in calmly. You can also come in in, in a defensive way. Mm -hmm. Do I have control over that? No, you don't have control over that. I, I don't have control over how you come into that conversation or how you take the things that I say to you. But what I have control over is how I approach you. Yeah. So I know that I'm being very respectful. Respect is respect. There's no, respect is the one way thing. 
Like mm. black is black, white is white. If you are being disrespectful, yeah. you know it. If you are being respectful, you know it. Yeah. But it depends on how you take it, Joy. Mm. Right? So yeah. just speak out and go in with the mindset of, you know what? Um, I want to be part of the change, right? Yeah. I understand that it's going to take time to get there. Yeah. So that, that is okay. That is fine. It took people doing what they are doing now for us to be where we are today. Yeah. Right? So if you imagine a woman is given an opportunity, you go for meetings and you just throw your hands about talking rudely to people, disrespecting them. How are they going to accept other women? So you just have to see yourself as a pace setter in that person's life, like the person yeah. you are trying to enlighten's life, right? So the next time you have to meet someone else, they would know how to approach the person. And there are some people, honestly, I've come to realize um, you, don't, you don't argue with everyone or you don't have some discussions with everyone. You have to know when to stop, like when to leave some things at it. I don't have power over the mindset that you have. You have to decide, you have to decide for yourself that, okay, I'm going to embrace this. So that is how I deal with things, basically, with me. So I, I don't. I always say I don't see anything as a challenge. I just see it yeah. as um, a room to grow, an opportunity for me to grow. That that is it for me. There is nothing that I would say is, is a challenge because yeah. I need that particular thing to move on to the next. Yeah. Uh, I shared my experience offshore, where men men would pass from, especially after I had my first child, right? Someone would say to you, hey, the person said this in, in our local language, so let me say that way. She said, he said, hmm. and honestly, that night, I cried. I was that night, I cried. That was the only time I would say something really got to me. I cried that night. But I realized I wasn't crying because of what the man had said. It affected me because of how I felt about it. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I always say I never give other people the, the, that much authority over my life. No. So if I'm going to react to it that way, that, that means I had an issue with it. I had yeah. not dealt with it myself. So as women, you have to know what you are about, what you are aiming at, the goal. With that said, you are nice, you are kind, you work hard, you know you have to be there, you are empowered. That is all that matters. Wow. You know, so for, for those of you who do not understand the, the local Akan language in Ghana, um, Ohima, Ohima's co the comment that the, the, her colleague made was that, you know, money has caused her to leave her child, you know, to come and work in this very hectic environment you know for somebody who is a, a new mom you know that was that was quite a, that was quite a bit of a, you know a pill to swallow and um, but i really appreciate your thoughts around challenges because it's the way you see it perception is everything for some people they see challenge as an opportunity to grow for some mm -hmm. people they really folded their arms and they are, they are waiting for you know calvary how we to come and uh, the reason I asked about challenges is that globally uh, there's a there's a publication by the UN Women which came out this year, um, you know, a study around um, the digital equality, digital inclusion, and one of the things was some of the challenges there or issues we identified were things around uh, literacy, uh, access, um, the ability to have the right technical devices, to even experience digital. Because one, the other thing is, if you're not able to experience the technology, you know, there, it's very difficult for you to say, I want to be a part of this world or a part of this creation, you know, so it's important. And it's funny, I, I have some statistics here that says, um, this is uh, one case study that was done by the World Wide Web Foundation. And it says that in a study they did, 45% of women said they didn't know, they didn't use the internet because they didn't know how to, compared to 36% of men that used it. You know, and then just so that we put it in context, when it comes to 
the concept of digital inclusion. You know, it's defined by the UN as the equitable, meaningful, safe access uh, to use, uh, to lead and to design of digital technology, services, and associated opportunities for everyone everywhere. So when we talk about um, being able to create, you know, equitable, you know, situation, for example, in your academy, you would realize that, and one of the things that even blew my mind was a statement they made that, you know, boys even have more, you know, what they call chop money or allowance, you even go to the internet cafe uh, to browse, while women or girls would rather be saying, spend more time at home helping your parents, you know, to take care of the family. So even from a very young age, they have sort of like a step forward to even exploring the use of technology, devices, software, compared to girls, you know. So I think that maybe one of the things that we'd like to also hear from you is, what is the model or what, how, how is it structured when it comes to your programs to you do um, with you know, girls in science and technology and also in the academy? Um, with regards to access, the devices they use, do, do you have availability of laptops? Are those things available for you to create that opportunity or that experience, you know, for the girls to, to know exactly what you're talking about? Yes, yes. So you know what? Um, everything you're fighting for now, right, you're going to see the impact in 10, 15, 20 years to mm -hmm. come. Because now we have a generation of parents who are understanding why their females, their, their daughters are to be empowered as well. And you'll be amazed at how parents are actually pushing their, their female, their, their daughters more, um, more to get into things like this. I, I have more girls being signed up to my programs than the boys, actually, yes. And I always encourage the parents to purchase these um, laptops, computers, even smartphones, tablets for their kids. Because yes, you will come, you will come to the academy, you will have the opportunity to use these things. But then when you go home, then what, right? So you need to be able to have it, to be able to practice at home as well. So yes, it's looking very good. And I really can't wait to see the impact that we are going to have in 10, 15 years to come. I know it's going to be great, yes. Yes, and I think that the next time we'll be having a conversation with you, we'll be talking about, you know, greater successes that have been, you know, chalked by uh, yourself, the academy, and then the work that you do with science and technology. Yes. Um, yes. So the one, we, we also have a program called the Shirok uh, Women's Accelerator um, at Abbey Innovation Studios. And we've run it for three years. So it's an accelerator that focuses on women um, in, on career break. So that's a very interesting demography of women because they are not your typical, they are not really all over the place. They are not on social media when we're looking for women to register for these programs. You know, your regular social media ads didn't work. You know, you had to get to women who were actually on career breaks to connect you to other women on career breaks. And we have this six week program that takes them to digital skills training because then a lot of them are preparing themselves to get back to work, whether after being away for three years, uh, nine years, some of them have been away from work, traditional work for 12 years. And you know, the, what you see is that there's so much zeal from these women who seem to feel like they've been left behind by their peers and the world is going so fast and, you know, was it their fault that they had babies and all of those kind of things keep coming in. But what we find is that most of the women even afterward didn't even have a device, a laptop, to even continue doing the coding, the website development, the graphic designs that they had been, you know, empowered to do, to even create a new career for themselves. And we found that so heartbreaking uh, because is it that they had the, the priority has, is, is in another place? Because, I mean, I'm not, it's not like how much is a computer, you know, how much is a computer? But I think that the realization that having a computer being connected 
to opportunities. The global playground is yours. Um, I think last two weeks or so, there was an ad, uh, the World Economic Forum showed this snippet ad on LinkedIn, and it was talking about uh, Spotify. When Spotify, during the lockdown, Spotify went fully remote, and it saw an exponential increase in the number of women leaders. You know, and so when we talk about why has a situation like COVID, lockdown, everybody working remotely, suddenly brought to life a very important element that, you know, actually probably the traditional way that the work was set up is not supporting a particular way of life. Because we all know that when it comes to um, caring duties, domestic work, I mean, the burden mostly falls on the woman, you know, so you cannot expect these two people to, you know, giving them the same bicycle with the same tire sizes to run the same race. You would have to make some alterations. This is where, I mean, I challenge a lot of leaders who are watching us um, live on our different social channels to rethink about designing, designing programs, designing solutions. Um, the concept of design thinking comes into play where the user is at the center of the design. You know, you cannot design a solution where you, you feel it's a solution, but it's not solving the problem. You know, we look at our road networks in Africa. I will speak of my own country, Ghana. And I look at a road network and I just ask myself, what went into thinking about the design of the road? I mean, absolutely no thought because you are very well aware that we have people that have special needs who run on two wheels, people that um, have to go faster and so use motorbikes. And the road network does not factor in, even pedestrians, like even pedestrians. Like, so are we supposed to be like flying over the road? There is no consideration whatsoever. And so the concept of rethinking our design when it comes to programs, solutions, and initiatives, we really have to consider all the players, all the stakeholders that have to use that solution. And so I'm, I'm happy to, to hear you talk about how you've also gotten parents involved to make sure that they are also you know, invested. And one of the things that I also wanted to mention about the Shirok was, I, I got a little bit marveled that women have to be able to reprioritize because you cannot be ahead of the game if you're putting money into other things. A lot of the women were, you know, had side hustles, their own businesses. And my question was, how are you competing on the global scale? How are you using technology? And he goes, I mean, this technology thing, I even feel embarrassed to even talk about it. That is when we have to even talk about it the most. Because how are you connecting with a global market of 8 billion people and you're just sitting here and then you're complaining that you don't have even enough money to buy yourself a laptop. You know, so I feel like women should also reprioritize where they even put their finances. You know, things, things mm -hmm. are Yeah. I don't know if you have any comments or reactions to that. So, so let, me, let me say this. Um, talking about career breaks and uh, yeah. women, I feel you always have to lead a career with a plan, right? Um, as women, especially when you start, when you get married and you start a family and all that, you always have to have a plan, right? That is if you want to take a break, if you would want to take, and that is fine. I don't, I don't like when women, some people try to judge women who want to take time off to raise their kids. That is fine. I feel there's so much power in that because they are the next generation right? The people that we are trying to make things better for, right? So you're trying to make things better for these people and you're not raising them well, then there's a question mark. How are they going to take care of it when they get there? Absolutely. So it's perfectly fine. But how do we, how, how can they make use of this break? I had so much more visibility. I've done so much more impact work, working for myself and having, understanding how social media works, right? I sold thousand books that see all around us. I sold thousand books and all I used was my Instagram and LinkedIn. Mm. I didn't have to pay for anything. That was my marketing ground. 
I had six over 600 people attend the program I held in Accra. And all I did was Instagram ads. I remember going to a TV station, hoping to partner with them. And they told me it would be 60-40, where I would have to give them 60% of their earnings and I would have 40%. And I'm like, wow. When I am putting in all the money, right? I had over 600 people attend. When all The only thing, I didn't use any influencers, nothing. The only thing I used was my Instagram account and my LinkedIn account. Mm. People are, there are people outside working remotely when we talk about coding and they're making so much more money than people who dress up and go to the office every day, people in the corporate world. So we have to make sure that our women know how much they can earn from having a knowledge in technology. And when we talk about technology, I think people go like, hey, because they think like it's something out of this world, right? People don't even understand the power that they have by using their smartphones. You don't necessarily need even a laptop, right, to start. You get a good phone and you are good to go. I started recording Girls in Science and Technology, my YouTube with my phone. So we have to, even with the little that they have, we have to yeah. teach them how to use the little that they have. And from that, they can get what they can get there, be able to afford the more expensive technology and all that. So that is yeah. what we should be focusing on, yes. Even how to use them. I have realized that people don't even know how to use mobile money. Mm. And yes, so this, there are so many petty, petty things that with, with regards to technology that we have to tackle before they can actually make use of the bigger ones, right? Yeah, yeah and absolutely. Then, absolutely. I think the last thing I want to talk about is personal branding. Mm. Which, and we, we are fortunate that we have social media for this. What we put out there matters so much. How did you how did you reach out to me? It was through LinkedIn, right? Yeah. And all the way that you see me do. Yeah. That is how collaborations are, are done. I used to do these things like I've been I've been doing this empowerment thing for so long. There was a lady who just reached out to me on Instagram. Funny enough, I used to post a lot, a lot on, on Instagram. So she reached out to me on Instagram and she went like, oh, Hima, you're doing so well, but I've tried, to, I've seen your LinkedIn account and you don't post as much. Mm. Is there a reason why? And that was it for me. I'm like, wow, okay, I'm doing the work, but am I using the right platform? So then I started being active on LinkedIn and that was it. I started getting the recognition, the right connections, and I'm here with you today. So we yes. have to empower our women, yes, to use even their social media platforms very well, the Facebooks, all the time we spend going through yes. all the gossips and things out there. Like, these are platforms that people are making money from, and it's technology. We have yes. to let people understand. When we talk about technology, these are the things that we are talking about. Yeah, right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you, you, I mean you, you couldn't have put it any better. Um, I think that there's so much power and it's on tap because a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misunderstanding, you know, and I think that when a global report like I shared comes out and talks about the fact that women just are not participating um, because of a lack of knowledge. I mean, today, mm -hmm. if you... You are having a lack of knowledge. I have one of our ladies, sorry, uh, just to interject this story, who attended our Shira program. She's a blogger. She writes African stories. Amazing, amazing woman. And mm -hmm. after the program where we learned about, you know, web design, we learned about uh, monetization, she went ahead to now monetize her blog. And so she could be asleep, uh, but her blogs are working for her. Exactly. So you need to connect to where the source of knowledge and um, invest because people are putting money um, into just upskilling or creating the capacity. When I came back from France, I was in France for to study. I came back and I had you know some caring, um, you know caring responsibilities. You know, so I couldn't take on a full time job as I thought I would do. Coming back, you know, with a degree, a master's degree, and all of that. But I sat down between me and my computer within three months, 
you know, working with Abbey Innovation Studio, we had raised revenue over what I would typically earn working in a corporate organization within three months, just because between me and my computer, there was so much knowledge I would learn on the spot. People bring opportunities of, you know, Google ads, people bring opportunities of, you know, web design and all of those things. And you learn on the spot. I think one of the things that yeah. organizations and leaders should encourage their workforce to be doing is also to learn how to learn. You know, the fact that you went to do economics for four years doesn't mean that you are stuck in the mindset of economics. Your economics plus social media marketing could exponentially change your business. You know, your teaching degree plus technology could change the school that you are, you have started. And so there's a lot of miscommunication that it's difficult. I feel embarrassed about it. I mean, if you're embarrassed, speak out about it. Abbey Innovation Studio has a digital academy that is training people. You know, people sign up and then they do not show up. It tells you that there's no agency. They do not even understand that in the next, you know, by 2030, by 2050, when Africa's population and the number of youth would be more than the, the global youth or we, about 50 to 40 percent the global youth population we do not understand the urgency it is to you know sit down get on a youtube course get on a coursera course to sharpen our skills there will be no excuse when it comes to that you know we cry we cry you know that there's so much poverty we're suffering from um, power issues connectivity we need to innovate around these things. And that's one of the core mandates of Abbe Innovation Studio. We are not here to just you know, do the nice things. We want to innovate around our challenges, put the power back in the hand of the Ghanaian and the African. Because other people, our focus has been on Calvary coming, the government is going to do something, but what are you doing? What are you going to be doing around the issue of exactly. road network, power, water crisis? you know, gender equality, women not getting access to, you know, equal opportunities. We need to be the solution that we seek, you know. And so um, as we kind of wrap up this conversation, I'm so excited about all the comments that have come in from our viewers. And I'm sure they've been so inspired by your story. We talked about, we're talking about technology and business, you know, and you shared some examples of how women can take technology to expand their businesses. Um, a few things that I would also want to just, you know, point out as we go, I would also come back to you for your closing remarks would be, when you look at the picture of equity, um, when I shared that picture with um, our audience, you know, when we talk about uh, this thing called equity, it, it, it just immediately tells you how much, um, leadership plays a role here because if you're you're doing a one size fits all thing production cost is less we just have one mode we we we, we just print all the bicycles same size same dimensions you know it's 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 cost it costs less if you go to a printing press today and you want to print different sizes of t-shirts they will tell you that it will come with different prices or you want to print on different sides of the t-shirt. It will come with extra cost. But at the end of the day, that's why I made you talk about the why. The reason we must go the full length, the reason we must push to ensure that equity and equality, this conversation is at, at the top of priority for leaders in organization is because if we do not do go the extra mile of you know making this equitable uh, systems and processes in our organization, is that we lose a chunk of you know the brain power and the wisdom that is coming from the entire pool of, of um, people in your organization you go into a boardroom and, and the decision is from half side of the brain because you have only men or you have only women on the table everybody needs to be brought together i look at the population of people with special needs people who use wheelchairs in in our part of the world you know, a lot of them don't even have motorized. They always have to depend, be depending on someone else. You know, so the concept where the leaders must care, leaders must care enough, leaders must be concerned that this solution or this initiative is only going to be one-sided. 
you know, I, I had a quote from someone who said, the toughest leaders are the ones who cares when it matters the most. It's very important. And then also looking at creating the capacity to teach others. You know, we, we sit here, we're talking about the work that we're doing in our different spaces, and it all has an element of passing on knowledge and wisdom to someone else. You know, if in your organization, you are not creating an opportunity for others to share knowledge with, with, with their peers, uh, peer learning sessions, collaboration sessions, I meet a colleague and I could easily do the work, but I take, you know, 15 minutes to run her through what she can do. And you'll be amazed at how she would go about solving a problem. You know, so I think that it's one of the things that for me and um, in this conversation of embracing equity leaders must encourage you know teaching peer learning sessions in their organizations in the home you know share allow your children to engage with others and learn from each other that's a very powerful tool and then um i, I remember walking into one of Af and ghana's uh, most popular uh, malls we call melcom it's it's sort of like for in the mid range of prizes and things like that and I, I see um, a number of women who have been hired to do the stock counting. And most of them were sitting idle, like sitting on the floor or sitting on the side, waiting for a customer to come and, you know, ask for help. And I'm thinking about the food chain when it comes to technology and digitization. In the next two years, if Melcom is innovative and they are bringing these robots that can just climb the stock, and count the, the stock, they will be crying that there's been massive layoff of jobs, we've lost our jobs, we, you know, we've lost our jobs. But the time when they had to you know, be uncomfortable to learning how to create the robot that is going to do the counting, they are then giving themselves an insurance, a future insurance, where they're now when they are fired, they know exactly how to create the tool to get back into business. So I, I, you know, I just feel like the food chain, you know, when we talk about food chain, the lion with, the, you know, eating up everyone else, most of us are sitting in the prey category. We're doing jobs that can easily be taken up by, you know, technology. And we are not quickly pivoting. We are not quickly learning to say, you know what, aside my HR degree that I have, you know, right now, people, there's freelance consulting everywhere. People can outsource the entire HR department to a small consulting company, you know, which is managing other HR departments. So if you're sitting and you're just comfortable being um, an employee um, engagement specialist, you need to rethink, how do I enter into things like data and data and analytics, people analytics, so that my organization now has more value for me than just doing maybe some manual routine work, which could easily be outsourced. You know, so I think that these are some of the things that we should be thinking as leaders in our organizations and just thinking how we can move up the food chain so that we are not cut off or we are not eaten by the prey. And then the last thing is being curious. We've just got to be curious. Like I cannot, for me, it's my personal mantra when i work with people who do not show signs of curiosity i just cannot work with you because it's so important that wherever you're sitting in your space you are asking what is the next move what is the next step what is what is going to be crucial in the space that i am i am working i am working in you know so these are some of the thoughts that i'm just throwing out there to all our listeners to leaders uh to rethink how we are structuring things in organization so I would let you, Hema, just give us your, you know, your closing remarks and any thoughts that you want to share. And also just tell us where we can find you um, on social media and just a little bit about your book, Steam All Around Us. Okay, so um, what I want to say, what I want to add is that um, everything that we've talked about here starts with a shift in mindset, right? Um, you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to join the, the technology train, or as I say, the STEM steam train. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable now, knowing that um, it will be beneficial to you at the end, right? Change, change comes with some discomfort when you start, 
but then eventually you start um, reaping the benefits that comes with it. That is one. Two, um, we can sit here and talk and talk and empower our women, but we also have to empower them to shine their light. We want to see what you are doing. We want to see the work that you are doing. You've seen other people do it, and it served well as a motivation for you. So you need to also throw your light out there and illuminate the path, right, for the younger ones coming up as well. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Ohima AJ Andor, Instagram, Ohima AJ Andor. Twitter, I think it's Ohima Andor. I'm not too active on Twitter. So Twitter is <laughs> Ohima Andor on Twitter. And I'm available to talk to if you need encouragement, motivation, um, collaboration of any sort, right? I'm available as well. And I want to use this opportunity to say thank you to Joy and thank you for the amazing work that you're doing with your academy. It's, it's great to see women do great things, right? And because I believe when we do great things, when we do great things, it, it comes from a place of hope. Anytime you see a woman trying to make a change, that means you have a foresight. You know what you're working towards. It's for the greater good, right? And we really, really need a lot of people doing what you're doing now. So thank you so, so much for the opportunity. Oh, I mean, that was a good way to end the session. Uh, thank you so much, Ohima, for accepting our invitation. And on such a day where the world is celebrating women, we're celebrating, we are gathering ideas, we're looking at partnerships and collaborations. I'll definitely be reaching out on you know, possible partnerships and collaboration opportunities between our organizations. And you know, thank you to all our mentors. I mean, Abbey Innovation Studio has benefited so much from mentors around the world for our She Rock program and for our volunteer program. And we really appreciate you all. Um, I cannot mention names today, but I think that we want to really dedicate this uh, session to you and to say thank you for all that you do. There have been really great shoulders that we have stood on. Even our mothers, our aunties, the grandmothers that have all been part of shaping our mindset, shaping our thinking pattern, uh, that some of us have taken, you know, are you know, taking the opportunities that have been presented to us and not shine in our corners, but to be an example uh, for everyone and the younger ones coming up. So I do appreciate you. Uh, if you don't follow Abbey Innovation Studios on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, please you find us at, at Abbey is, I -S, you find us. And then for more information about our program services, you find us at www.abbeystudios.com. We are excited. We know we are really grateful for you know having your attention for all those who connected with us on all your, on our platforms and for the comments and for the questions. We we are really grateful. Him, I thank you so much uh, for joining us today. So, want to wish you guys a happy International Women's Day. Enjoy the day. And as we end, uh, we just want to encourage you. You can check out Ohima's book if you're parents and you're looking to. Um, you know, share, find this book. I think you find it on Amazon and, you know, just search for it. You'll be able to purchase one and then see, read the great work that she's put in there. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful day.